All right, let's go ahead and do lesson 43. Let's start with number one. So we have 49 and 571 thousandths. They want this in expanded form. Remember expanded form is when you expand each of the place values and put that plus symbol in between each of them. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the equal sign after this because once you were to add all of those, it would equal this. So I'm gonna start with the largest place value, which is the tens and four tens is 40 plus the nine is in the ones and nine ones are nine. Next I have a five and a 10, so we would add five tenths. Next we would add that seven hundredths, which would be decimal zero seven. You have to have that zero in there in the tens place because you have no tens with that seven hundredths when you're expanding. Next, we're gonna expand out the one in the hundreds, which would be decimal zero, zero, seven. And if you were to add all of that up, it would equal 49 and 571 thousandths. All right, number two, I'm gonna expand just like I did on lesson 42. So we are starting with 330 and we're dividing all of this by three. So how many times will three go into 330? So my brain goes three times one would get me to 330. Well, I don't know that offhand, but if I were thinking of 300, because there are 300s in this number. So how many threes are in 300? Well, I know that's 100, and three times 100 is the 300. So if we subtract that out, zero, 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 three minus three and a zero, which would end up 30. Well, how many threes are in 30? That would be 10, and 10 times three is 30, which would end up getting me to zero, yay. So then you have to add up the 100 and the 10, which would get me 110. So your answer would be 110. Number three, we're gonna be rounding 14 and 976 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. What digit is the hundredth place? That is a seven, neighbor is a six, four less or five or more, that is five or more, so go up one more. Seven will turn to eight. Everything in front stays the same, everything behind zeros their name. So this would have rounded to 14 and 980 thousandths. Number four, use the data in the chart to complete a line plot for the weight of toys in the vending machine. What was the total weight of all of the toys? So three-fourths is the first one, so we'll put an X. Then we have another three-fourths, so that will go on top. We have a one-fourth, another three-fourths, a one-half, and another three-fourths. Well, if you just put the X's on your line plot, you would be counted incorrect because if you notice, number four also says, what was the total weight of all of the toys? So what we have to do is add up all of these fractions. So I'm gonna first add up all of my three fours because I do have four of those. So three fours plus three fours, three fours, Three fourths, that's three, six, nine, 12 fourths. Well, then I also have another fraction that has fourths, which is one fourth. So 12 fourths plus a one fourth would be 13 fourths. But then I also have a one half. I only have one of these. So then I one half I cannot add to those fourths. So I'm gonna have to find an equivalent fraction with fourths. So two times what is four? That is two. So whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So one times two is two. So I'm gonna add this two fourths. So 13 fourths plus two fourths is 15 fourths. So 15 fourths is the amount or the total weight of all my toys. So 15 fourths. And this is in kilograms, you put kg, 15 fourths kilograms. All right, so let's go on to number five. We have 416 minus 85 in parentheses plus a nine times six in parentheses. This is order of operations, which is PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. P is for parentheses. 
So I do have two sets of parentheses, so we will have to solve each. So the first one is that 416 minus the 85. Six minus five is one. I cannot do one minus eight, so I'll do um, borrow, which will return 11. 11 minus eight, so eight, nine, 10, 11, which is three, and then three. So 331 is what we'll replace this with. Nine times six is 54, so we'll replace that with 54, bring down what we didn't use, which is my plus. So then let's do 331 plus 54. One and four is five, three and five is eight. So 385 is my sum. Number six, find the lowest common denominator, replace the given fraction with an equivalent form, and then add. Write the answer in simplest form. So we are originally adding, I wanna change the color of my pen. So I'm originally adding one fourth and four sixths. I cannot add these because my denominator is not the same. So it wants me to find an equivalent fraction with the denominator 12. So one fourth the 12th denominator, four times what is 12? That is three. So whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So one times three is three. So the equivalent fraction is three twelfths. So let's do four, six equals a fraction with twelfths as the denominator. Six times what is 12? That would be six times two. So whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So four times two is eight. So the equivalent fraction is eight twelfths. So now let's add three twelfths plus that eight twelfths. My denominator stays the same. Three and eight would be eight, nine, 10, 11. So one fourth plus four six is 11 twelfths. All right, let's go ahead and go and do numbers seven through 12. So number seven, is angles are formed wherever two blank share a common endpoint. So if you do not know this, so the key word in this is endpoint because when we draw a line, there are two arrows on each end, which basically means both of those ends would go on and on and on. Neither one of them have an endpoint. But if you create a line that has an endpoint, which looks like a period or a decimal point at the end, these are called rays. So angles are formed wherever two rays. So if I draw another ray in another direction, this creates this angle. So to fill in the blank here are wherever two rays share a common endpoint. All right, number eight, shade in nine tenths of the fraction model. This base 10 block has 10 pieces in it. So if we were going to shade 9 tenths, we would shade in 9. Remember, it doesn't have to be beautiful. Um, now you have to write the fraction as a decimal. So to write 9 tenths as a decimal, it would be a decimal point in a 9. That is 9 tenths. Number 9, we are going to multiply 51 and 63. So one times three is three, five times three is 15. Do not forget your place value zero. One times six is six, five times six is 30. We are going to add three and zero is three, five and six is 11, one one and zero is two, and then three and nothing would stay three. So 51 times 63 is 3,213. Number 10, all triangles are polygons with three sides and three angles. A right triangle has exactly two perpendicular sides, which is a right triangle. So two perpendicular sides. Remember earlier we had talked about perpendicular sides being a perfect plus sign somewhere with all four angles being right angles. So let's see. If we were to extend out the sides on this triangle, none of those have perpendicular sections. So this would be a no-go. If we were to extend out the sides of this, also no 90 degree angles, which would be perpendicular, so that's a no-go. If we were to extend the sides out here, these look close, but they are not 90 degrees. You can notice that this angle right here is much larger than this angle here. So this is a no-go. 
we were to extend out here, oh, look here. So this right here is a perpendicular side. This would be side one, this would be side two, or vice versa. But these two sides come together and create a perpendicular section. So this one right here, this last triangle is the correct answer. Number 11, choose the numerical expression that represents 10 times 315 divided by three fourths. So they tried to trick you here because they put one of the numbers in word form. So they put a 10 right here. So if you wanna just write the number 10 to make that easier for you to notice, you may. So 10 times 315 divided by three fourths. So we wanna do the 315 divided by three fourths first. So A has 315 divided by 3 fourths, so we'll wait for it. This has 3 fourths divided by 315. That is not what it said. It wants the 315 first, so B would be a no-go. C isn't even dividing, it's subtracting, so that's a no-go. But then you also need to make sure that it has the 10 times, and it does. It's multiplying by 10, so the correct answer is A. Number 12, convert seven meter, or excuse me, seven centimeters. So I'm gonna put seven cm equals how many meters? Will that be converted? Will the converted amount have more or fewer units than the original? If you do not have your conversion chart with you, I will pull one up. So we, oops, I forgot honestly what we were. We want centimeters to meters. So centimeters to meters. So if you look at this conversion chart, so if you notice it does not have centimeters to meters, it has centimeters to millimeters. So if you have your conversion chart, I would like for you to add this to it. So one centimeter equals one hundredth of a meter. So if you know that one centimeter is one hundredth of a meter, how many meters would be a seven centimeters? This is where we would multiply the one hundredth times the seven. So one times seven is seven, zero times seven is zero. Add that decimal. So seven centimeters would be equivalent to seven hundredths a meter. Let's go ahead and do number 13, 14, 15. Number 13, we want to write the power of 10 as a product of the same factor. Find the value. So remember, the first blank needs to be a multiplication equation. And the last one is just give me the product. What would your answer be? So we have 10 squared or 10 to the second power. So 10 is the number I'm multiplying. 2 is the number of times I will be multiplying. Number of times I'll be multiplying that number. So this would be 10 times 10. What is 10 times 10? Well, that's 100. So I need 10 times 10 and 100 in the box to make sure the whole answer is in there. 14, we are estimating and then we are doing exact. Oop, I forgot the cross on my T. All right, so for the exact, this is. 20 and 44 hundredths divided by seven and three tenths. I'm actually gonna rewrite that down here because that is way too difficult to see. Well, we also have to make this number here a whole number. So by doing that, we have to move our decimal once to the right. What I do to one number, I have to do the other. So I will also move the decimal one to the right here, which then would be, 204 and 4 tenths divided by 73. And then let's estimate. So we're going to go back to the original numbers of 7 and 3 tenths. So if we were rounding that, excuse me, that would be 7. And then 20 and 44 hundredths, would that be closer to 20 or 21? Well, that would be closer to 21. So then we would have 21 divided by 3. Well, what is 21 divided by three? That was pretty easy, that is seven, so the estimate would be seven. So now let's do exact. So our exact, we have to think of 73 will go into two, how many times that will not work? 73 into 20 will not work. 73 into 204. Well, 73 is close to 
a hundred. So in two hundred, there's two hundreds. So let's do 73 times two and see what that gets us. So I'm gonna do that over here. 73 and then 73 and 73 would make six. So that would be 14. So if I'm skip counting, there would be 73 and 146. Let's add another 73 just to be sure. Six and three is nine. Four and seven, that would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. One and one is two, so that'd be 219, which is too much. So we would have to do the two. And two times that 73 would be 146. So let's subtract. Cannot do that there. That'd be end of nine, that would be 14. 14 minus six would be eight. Seven minus four is three. Bring down this four, 384. So let's keep adding 73 to see how many it will take this. Nine and three is 12, seven, seven, eight, nine. And so that'd be 292 would be next to my skip counting. 73, two and three is five, nine, seven, 16, 365. Oh, look there, so 365. So that was one, two, three, four, five times. And five times 73 was 365. So if I subtract, this would turn to seven. So 14 minus five would be nine. Seven minus six would be one. So we have that 19. So before we put that remainder 19, we have to put this decimal in there, which is one to the left. So we have to put that, oh no. So I accidentally, had my erase button clicked and I did not realize it. And now my computer is trying to freeze. So you would have to put that decimal point into your answer. So then it would make it two and a half or two and five tenths. And then you could put that remainder 19 in there. All right, I think I got it unfroze. So then you would have two and a half with a remainder of 19, which is what we would do now in fifth grade. We're not gonna get um, into the decimal part of it. So number 15, identify the pattern by stating the rule. We went from four to six, four to two to six to four to eight to six to 10. So that one's real wonky. So to get from four to two, you subtracted two. Two to six, you added four. Six to four, subtract two, four to eight, add four. Yeah, so okay, so then eight to six, subtract two, six to 10, add the four. So it would be subtract two, add four. And I want you to write that out. So, whoops, you can put sub two, add four. All right, good job.